The news day continues here on One News Now. I'm Pauline Verzosa. The health department reports 55 new HIV cases daily in the Philippines with a growing number among the youth, some as young as 15 years old. DOH Secretary Ted Herbosa highlighted the urgency of the situation and mentioned exploring the expansion of access to antiretroviral treatment or ARV through the private sector. Mobile Journal Julie Baiza has the report. 55 new cases of human immunodeficiency virus or HIV are recorded in the Philippines every day according to the Department of Health. These cases commonly involve the youth as young as 15 years old. Testing natin 61%. We have about 59,000 people living with HIV. It's something like, I think, 130,000 ang estimate ng existing. That's still low for a country with 110 million. Pero ang ating mataas ay yung new cases, 55 new cases a day, highest in the world. That's why we need to stop. And I think it's because of the education kasi mga bata sila. Her boss emphasized the need to educate the youth about safe sex and promote HIV awareness as they have become more experimental and exposed to the internet. They are now coordinating with the Department of Education about the issue. Aside from this, the health department is also looking into the possibility of making the ARV drugs or antiretroviral therapy available in the private sector. Ang ARV natin sa gobyerno lang makukuha, through field health. You can't buy it in the private sector. The other thing is probably make it available in the private sector. Kagaya uh, TB. Pag walang gamot sa TB dot center, ay pumunta ka sa butika, may reseta ka, bilhin mo yan. Meanwhile, the DOH would not recommend travel restrictions on any country with increasing COVID infections driven by the new coronavirus variant. I'm not thinking border control, mandatory mass. I'm not thinking that. But I'm advising every Filipino, since that's happening, that can come here, yung minimum public health standards. If you are sick, you have cough, colds, uh, sore throat, it's better to stay home. Uh, if you need to go out, wear a mask. So it's still personal. When asked if this variant have reached the country... It's possible. Uh, although the variant hasn't, isn't serious, um, th that's why it's only classified as a variant under monitoring. Di ba, mayroon variant of concern and then yung talagang uh, din declare nilang public health emergency of international. So it's under a variant of monitoring. Mabilis siya kumalat, so they're thinking nagwe-wane siguro ang immunity. Her boss has said that they are continuously monitoring the cases and the behavior of this new flirt variant. Mobile journalist Julie Baiza, We Are One News. The House of Representatives has approved the absolute divorce bill on its final reading. House Bill number 9349 garnered 126 votes in favor, 109 against, and 20 abstentions. The bill aims to reinstate divorce as an option for ending broken or dysfunctional marriages. It allows couples to file divorce on grounds such as domestic abuse, marital infidelity, psychological incapacity, and irreconcilable differences. The bill is expected to be cheaper and faster, granting divorced spouses the freedom to remarry. To those who oppose the measure, I truly respect their differing views based on religious belief, fear of their bishops and pastors, following the preference of their constituents, apprehension of reprisals at the polls, that it is a conjugal decision, and in order not to displease their respective spouses. I am happy to note that these objections do not go into the empirical and secular merits, constitutionality, and efficacy of the absolute divorce bill. The House of Representatives issued a censure penalty to Davao del Norte 1st District Representative Pantaleon Alvarez for disorderly conduct. This is after his call to the AFP to withdraw support from President Marcos. The recommendation from the House Committee on Ethics and Privileges was affirmed through nominal voting with 186 favorable votes, 5 opposition and 7 abstentions. 
Panel Chair Representative Felimon Espares stated they originally recommended a 60-day suspension, but this was reduced after lawmakers found the penalty too harsh. Censure serves as a sufficient measure to address that misconduct without unduly impacting the ability to serve his constituents. This balanced approach ensures accountability while allowing for continued legislative contributions. More than 140 passengers and crew from a Singapore Airlines flight that suffered severe turbulence have reached Singapore. According to authorities, 20 people are still fighting for their lives in a Bangkok hospital. The flight bound for Singapore from London diverted to Bangkok for an emergency landing on Tuesday. The plane was buffeted by turbulence that flung passengers and crew around the cabin and even slamming some into the ceiling. A 73-year-old British passenger died of a suspected heart attack while dozens were injured. Ireland, Spain and Norway has announced that they will recognize Palestine as an independent state. So far, 144 member states of the United Nations recognize the Palestinian state, including the Philippines. Palestinian officials welcomed the announcement, while Israel condemned the European country's recognition and called it a, quote, prize for terrorism. More than 40 areas in the country are still expected to experience dangerous level of heat index. According to Pagasa, it will be hottest in Giwan Eastern Samar at 47 degrees Celsius, followed by Dagupan City in Pangasinan, Apari in Cagayan, and Butuan in Agusan del Norte at 46 degrees Celsius. Despite the extreme heat, isolated rains and thunderstorms are possible over in Metro Manila and the rest of the country. That's due to the easterlies or warm winds coming from the Pacific Ocean. Water shortage and drought are some of the consequences of El Nino. Despite June being near, which typically marks the start of the rainy season, El Nino could still cause problems until the next month. Here's the report. Kapansin-pansin ang sunod-sunod na pag-ulan itong mga nakalipas na araw. Pero sa kabila niyan, lalo pang dumadami ang mga lugar na nakakaranas ng matinding tagtuyot. Pagasa na mismo ang nagsabi, mahina o nasa weak condition na ang El Nino. Kaya inuulan na ang ilang bahagi ng bansa. Pero kung kailan may hudyat na ng nalalapit na tag-ulan, saka naman nagdeklara ng state of calamity ang probinsya ng Cebu dahil sa matinding epekto ng El Nino na nararanasan nila. Sa pinakuling datos pa ng pag-asa, umabot na sa 81 lalawigan ang patuloy na natutuyo ang lupa. 61 lalawigan dyan, nakararanas ng drought o matinding tagduyot. Kumpara sa 46 provinces lang noong Abril at asahan pa raw na dadami yan sa katapusan ng Mayo. Sa ngayon, nasa decaying stage ang El Nino pero yung impacts ay still continue na natin nararanasan sa ibang bahagi ng ating bansa. Sa huling tala ng Department of Agriculture, mas lumaki pa ang halaga ng pinsala ng El Nino sa agrikultura na umabot na ng 9.5 billion pesos. Para tugunan yan, naglaan na ng 9.71 billion pesos na podo para tulungan ang mga apektadong magsasaka. Another significant impact ang pag-issue declared states of calamity due to drought, tagay dito sa San Pablo City, sa Butuan City, at pati na rin sa Cebu. Una naman nang nagpaalala ang pag-asa na kahit hindi pa tapos ang El Nino, maghanda sa papalapit na La Nina. Yan ang kabaliktara ng El Nino kung saan matitinding ula naman ang inaasahang mararanasan. Yung nakikita natin possibility ng El Nino ay mga around 69% by July, August, September. Mm. At nakikita po natin ay most models ay uh, towards August, September, October yung makikita mga model na ga-agree ng pagkakaroon ng La Nina. Inaasahang matatapos na ang El Nino sa buwan ng Hunyo. Pero dahil sa pabago-bagong panahon, para mabawasan ang pinsala, mainam na tayo ay maging handa. Mobile journalist Francis Orsio po, hatid ang mukha ng balita.
Over at the PBA Philippine Cup semis, the Meralco Bolts and San Miguel Beermen improved their chances of getting to the finals. The Beermen bested the Rain or Shine Alaska Painters once again in Game 3, 117 to 107 at Dasmarinas Arena in Cavite yesterday. With a 3-0 record, San Miguel is now just one win away from booking their ticket to the finals. Meanwhile, Meralco outlasted Barangay Ginebra with an 87 to 80 victory. Meralco now has the upper hand 2 to 1 in the best of 7 series. The Gilas Filipinas under-18 women's team continues their preparations for their must-win opener against Thailand in the Asia Cup Siava qualifying tournament. The team arrived in Thailand yesterday and their match with the host country will kick off tomorrow 6 p.m. Manila time. The winner in this match will qualify to the FIBA under-18 women's Asia Cup Division B next month in China. Ava Fajardo will lead the team together with Gabi Ramos, Naomi Panganiban, Alisa Rodriguez, Jolzin Impreso, as well as Margaret Villanueva, Obri Lapasaran, and Sofia Candido. Ashley Abong, Tiffany Reyes, Venice Quinte, and Margaret Duenas are also part of the team. Bulacan's Chelsea Manalo is Miss Universe Philippines 2024. Manalo bested over 50 other candidates for the crown. She is now set to represent the country in the Miss Universe pageant in Mexico. The runners-up are Stacy Gabriel of Cainta and Atisa Manalo from Quezon Province, as well as Baguio Stara Valencia and Christy McGarry of Taguig. The live coronation was held in the Mall of Asia Arena on Wednesday night. And those are the top stories of the hour. I'm Pauline Rososa. We are One News.